The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Hi, everyone. Basil Trapp. Yeah, Larry will be back on Monday. I believe he's improved a lot. That's fabulous news. And not only that, but he'll be doing the show at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. And Steve Rhodes, who does the 1 o'clock show, is switching to the 11 o'clock show. This hour right now will be Steve Rhodes on Monday. So uh, tune in. It's just a, It's just a time change. But maybe we'll be back and we're missing him. So i got a ton of questions, and I'm going to do them right now. Crude oil. Crude oil is sitting right on the 200-period moving average. Did you even have to care about that 200-period moving average ever? Well, you did back in, uh, back in was that December? Yeah, December of uh, 20, January 2021. It hit the 200-period moving average briefly, made an arch formation, a successful dreaded H in the Chapman Wave methodology, and then screamed to the upside. And that was it. And it hasn't even been close until now. It got close back, and this is what happens with the 200-period moving average. There's one close attempt, and then it pulls away, either up or down, and then it goes right to it, and that's what you got to monitor. So here's your dreaded H pattern in the Chapman Wave methodology. I'll be doing that for my webinar on Wednesday, an all-day webinar. All these patterns we'll be looking at, there's just three basic patterns. Look, the, the, the straight line, the cup, or the, sorry, the arch or the cup formation. Uh, this this move, the price, you see all these notations are in a different place because it's a continuous contract of crude oil. So uh, the, the pattern... The waveform, nothing changes except the price and my notations because it's all done by hand. It's not automatic. It doesn't automatically go a quarter of an inch above the, the point, the, the high or the low. So I have to redo that all. But in the meantime, 200 period moving average, really important. What does that say? And that takes me to the question that I'm skipping. I had about 20 questions coming up. I'm going to go through them all right now. SCO is the inversion of the, uh, the long position of crude. This is the short position. And it rallies. So when crude is coming down, and so this is the pattern that we're talking about. The, the, so let me just do this right now. In the chat wave, we have basically three patterns. And for subscribers, for people who are attending my webinar, you not only get my newsletter, and we've had some really, really good, good positions, uh, good profits, uh, 20, 30, 40 percent, one or two, two, three, four, five percent losses, but we've had uh, good gains. Uh, straight line up or down. Cup formation, arch formation, a mix of one or and three in this case, the dreaded H takes out the left side low, can go a lot deeper, or the very positive inverted Y or reverse Y. If it takes out the left side high, it's going to go much higher. Well, look at the pattern that we're looking at here. We've got a straight line, a peak D, the chap wave. You always want to get to the peak D, and then other things can happen. There it is, peak D. Other things are happening. And it pulls back sharply from the 28s down to the 21s. And now it's trading. It hit today, 27, but it's trading right now, 25. So that's just saying to me that in the cup formation, the 9 is above the 14. The MACD's turned positive. It's not great, but it's turned positive. The stochastic's still lagging. The on-balance volume's pulled back a little bit, the blue line. So far, this is a positive uh, chart for the, for the inverse, the mirror image of the crude oil. But crude oil went all the way to its, its left side low. This hasn't gone to its left side high. So that's why you've got to be very careful with these inverted. This is uh, the pro shares ultra. This is, uh, what, two times short? So you just got to be really, really careful because um, the any failure of it to move in the direction that you want can see a very sharp pullback because it's such a leveraged instrument. So the answer to the question is, uh, in the um, person who has the SCO, yes, it's acting well, 
But on the weekly basis, you want to see leg C start above 28.69 uh, in the continuous contract. So that's a long way to go. And that means that crude oil holding the 200 period moving average as we speak, actually running off it, hit it yesterday. Today went under it at 87.01 and now it's trading at 80 at 90.56. I suspect that the best we're looking at here is an arch formation. So the dreaded H, the lowercase H, which took out the left side, I was two bars in which to close above it. Today so far is above it. And then you can bounce and you bounce to either a candle of importance or a moving average. And that says 93.50 to 94.30s. That's going to be important. A close above that says, oh, we can go even higher. If it fails there and starts to come back, the second visit to the 200 period moving average, it'll be the third time that it's gone in the direction, but only the second time that has actually touched it after a move off the low. That means it's going to probably take out 87, which is key support, and then that SCO should move higher. Let's go on with all the ones that I did that. I did it. AGI. Did I do AGI? Whoops. Why did I do that? What happens there? Why does that even pop up? All right. AGI. AGI is, in fact, um, oh, right. I forgot to type this in. It's so far away, I can't see. Alamos, Alamos Gold. Alamos Gold trading at 7.68. Had a really nice move to a peak G slash C yesterday. It's right on the 200 period moving average. I mean, how important is that? It's hit it six, seven times in the last seven sessions. Don't tell me that's not important. Um, it just tells me that it's in a trading band, a shorter term between 780 and 752. If it can take out, and I think this pullback in gold is just kind of temporary. I think gold is starting to strengthen via the GDX. That's, we'll do that in a moment. In fact, I'll do it now because we're talking about gold. So GDX is the question. We are actually long the uh, GDX for the first time in. I can't even tell you how long it's been since we went long the GDX. Um, and it's more just as kind of a, a position that says if gold is going to move, it doesn't move unless those gold miners, the market vectors, gold miners, ETF moves. This to me is so far an H pattern, the dreaded H pattern, but more importantly, it's being favored by the cup formation. Any close below 25 next this coming week? would say, nah, you, you're dreaming. This has got a long way to go to build up strength to really succeed in getting to the 28s. So that almost looks like uh, AGI. Is that what I was looking at? Yes, AGI. Keep your eye on the left side chart. Oh, no, this is making higher highs and higher lows. This is a good sign. This chart is much better. So AGI, I do like. Um, now, if you are not in it at all, what would I do right now? Because it's starting to show in, in the inner strength. If it can break away from the 200 period moving average one more time to get to 788 or higher, that's going to be fabulous action. I don't want to see it go to 752 because it makes a 766 line where it is right now at the 200 period moving average. Very strong resistance. I would nibble on a position. If you aren't in it already, you can nibble on it. And I would only add to it if it can get to 781. That's the way I would I would play this. So that's AGI. This question was IPI. IPI. Oh, is that the music? Uh, peak A, peak B, and then it stalls. IPI is in Shepard Potash. You know, oh, I have to take a little time. The weekly chart says this is in trouble. I'll be back. Dow's down uh, 62. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We're talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 And with that Mozart music overture, it's finishing up. Let's go to our charts. We're looking at Intrepid Potash IPI trading at 92 cents and 43.12. It looks to me with that peak D top in the weekly chart and the peak D top in the monthly, they're in cell modes, decisive cell modes. This is going to have a tough time. It's had a very nice steady move up from the low that was made just recently back in mid-July in the 35s and here it is bounces to 45 well, 30, that's 10 points that's a fabulous gain and now it's struggling a little bit i i would suspect that the area of 4680 to 4720 just in that area and 40.50 to 39.30 is going to be key so i think it's in a trapped in a trading band and until on a weekly basis it actually closes in the 47s it's just one week close in the 47s, but it has to get there. Um, it's just kind of stuck for now, but it must hold that 39 area. Close under 39 says, uh-oh, retest the lows. Next question was Square. Uh, I'd love to call it Square, but the name now is Block Inc., formerly Square. Point of sale, uh, software, mining receipts. Oh, Intrepid Potash was Potash, of course. Made a leg E today. Had a high of 93.19. It had a low of 56. 56 to 93. Darn, darn good. And that's the reason why I think ARC uh, must have uh, must be in ARC as well. Uh, Kathy Wood, her um, innovation fund. But now it's having a little bit of a digestive moment. This is an inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle. If at any point in the next three days it trades above 90.35 for more than 90 minutes, expect it to retest the 93.19 high. But if it starts to pull back and it goes under 85 and closes under 85 on any day, I think it's got a little bit of a timeout. And I think the general market right now, I'm hoping that we have a timeout that we expected after those peak Ds and Es. And uh, it would be very important. But in the big, big context, square from 289 down to 82. Mm -mm. Uh, sorry, 52. Was it 56? Down to 56. What a, what a decline. What is that? 80%, something, 70 something percent. Not good. It needs a lot more to start a buy signal that goes to a buy mode in the monthly chart, although it's starting to improve. So this is a good sign, and it's one of the good signs I'm looking at when I talk about 
rotational corrections. Uh, looking at Orly, O R L Y. Orly is trading. Uh, it made. I didn't know what to call this. This. There's no other way I can call that as uh, according at a peak B for now with that high that was made three days ago. Orly, Autom Riley Automotive, a uh, leg A. Uh, yes, leg A. That's not the the low bar cannot be the high bar, so that cannot be A. You have to wait for that uh, week of the 20th of May. You have to wait wait for a higher low, and then you can start your wave count. And that, that didn't make a, a new A. It didn't, 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 it failed, 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 and it had to wait all the way to this, not even this week. This is still a leg A to the upside. It hasn't made a peak A yet. Isn't that amazing? So this is a fabulous action. I believe that because people are keeping their cars longer, any pullback in O'Reilly Automotive should be at least give it some support for another rally towards higher highs. I can only call this a B, a G, there's no H ever. So, and then there's no other way I can count. I went over this a number of times the other day. So the, the high that was made on uh, today's Friday, on Wednesday of 712.63. Let me change that. 712.63. Sixty-three. Whoever asked it, I don't know whether you whether you own it or you're just looking at it. Um, oh, you were t mentioning how, how the pullbacks after the earnings can revert to strong moves. Look at this. Advanced Micro Devices also did that, and that's the reason why I say this is right now is a period where you've got the residual stocks that were, were acting really well that have come out with earnings where people know that they're still good, managed to come back, and you've got your stocks that even though they're good companies have been reporting bad earnings. When it comes out and it's good, there's this big question to say, yeah, yeah, but can they keep it up? So that's why there's a rotation going on right now. I expect that we've got, a, we've got some kind of a – the reason why we took profits this morning in some of our positions is because I think that we're in a consolidation now in the near term going into next week. And it's just some, as simple as that. So I do expect that from the way it looks right now, that Orly, O-R-L-Y, 698.34 down, 858 right now. I think it's going to go above 712.63. Not much higher. doesn't have to go much higher for leg C. So I like that. If we can close above 721 by Wednesday or Thursday of next week, that's fantastic action. If it breaks at 6, 698 right now, if it breaks a 692 support, in the next, this could be just one single arch formation, a rogue wave to the upside. But I, I think that all is still in play. Next question came in. JP Morgan, JP Morgan. Um, yeah, this is a good candle for the day. But the week, monthly, month, monthly, weekly charts are just saying, hey, the XLF as well, that's the financials. Holding okay. In fact, a new leg up. I think this is so individual that you've got to look at it as if to say, what are the stocks that are working in the sector? You can't even, we've chosen sectors because I think the majority of the stocks we are in, we are looking at in that, se in that sector are strong. In this particular instance, in the XLF, majority is strong, but don't get the wrong ones. And I think JP Morgan is one of the wrong ones right now. So uh, XLF acting very nicely. We have Bank of America. Um, it's, oh, look at that move. I didn't even see that. Nice move today. We're in a 30 we're in at 30 something. We've had this every year for years and years, and then we get out at a certain point. Uh, let me just tell you this. Uh, I should know exactly. We're in at 3261, and it's trading at 3383. Not a big deal, but let me tell you, it's been a tough one. But every year we get in and we get try to get in near the bottom. We missed the bottom this time because I was looking at other things. But we get in near the bottom and try to ride it up, and then we take profits, and then it comes all the way down. I don't know what happens with this stock. And the weekly chart's not great. The monthly chart's not good. I, At this point, I'm, I'm saying, look, we own you, Bank of America. Now perform, because the technicals on the daily chart are way superior to the technicals on the weekly chart. Next question is, so J.P. Morgan, the answer is, it better hold um, 100. It's at 115 right now. Any time in the next two weeks, if it takes out 111 on a closing basis, that's really poor action. If it manages to get above 117, today's highs 11619, then the 50-period exponential moving average, which it hasn't even touched for ages, which is at 117.06, gets tagged 
and then we'll see if it's able to move above that. Our next question was the GDX. Didn't I do the GDX? Yes, I did. GDX needs work to do, but it's a nice start to some kind of a bounce. But the technicals are much more improved than the price. I don't like that. I like to see the, the price moving together in tandem with the technicals. Um, let me go through that. I did, I did all that side. D, 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 O, G, D, Dog. Uh, D, Dog is trading right now at... Oh, I used to have these all notated. There's a whole a whole series of these uh, tech stocks that were sent to me months ago by someone who is in the field, works for one of the companies. And uh, look at this, peak A, B, C, D, E, F. It made a peak F and now it's digesting gains. That's the monthly chart. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman doing the 11 o'clock to 12 hour uh, for the Larry, Larry's hour I'm doing. And don't forget my webinar coming up Wednesday on all these different techniques. And there's a chance we might do some trading as well. I'll talk about that soon. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, let me just show you this from that peak F top in the one minute chart back at about 10.15 at about 41, what was it, 41.66.25. There's a beautiful arch formation and it says, that roundabout, I've, I can't, I, I don't want to do that right now. So that is a 10, uh, it's a one minute bar, so I can give it another 20 minutes, about another 20 minutes or so. So by, by before 12, there could be a test of the left side low, and that's the left side low of uh, 4107. Uh, 40, sorry, not 4107, 4105.25. Uh, that gives you another 20 minutes. This, uh, right here is where there needs to be a balance. We'll see what happens. All right, going back to our stocks. 
And don't forget, these are all the techniques that I'll be showing you. Look, look at the technique. Let me just go back here for a moment. That showed you that if you were short, when uh, the nine period crossed over the 14, from if you were long at 41.10, you could have been long all the way to when it crossed over back again to negative at 41.40. And it just briefed two bars, went green, and now it's pink, and it's still pink. And here we are at 41.17. Just these little, these technical tools that are so very easy to implement can give you so much information. So here's a rectangle formation in D-Dog. Uh, it does information technology. It's trading at 110.52 up three cents. So it's gone to a peak D. You remember, look, here's your peak A, peak B. Underneath it, it had a great peak A and B because it was under the previous high. You've got to count each peak from the starting point. And then... Once it breaks above that previous peak B there, that just picks up C. So this is an overlapping wave. Peak C goes to peak C on this move and that move. So it's an overlapping wave goes to a C. And that overlapping wave invariably says you should go to a D and then come pull back a little bit. That's exactly what it's done. But it's in a rectangle formation. A rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. And it's got 120 as resistance in the 200 period moving average, which it was lost there um, April. Uh, April wind was up in the 140 area. So it's just stuck for now. It's going to take a little time. Uh, key support is that it must hold 100, 105, sorry, 103 to 102 support. Um, that's going to be important. If it takes that out, it's in trouble because it's just going to go sideways longer. If at any point by Wednesday of next week when I'm doing my webinar, maybe I'll choose to follow this one. If it's at 121 or higher, that's good. That's good action. Um, Palantir comes out with earnings. Someone said, Palantir, we've followed this for years. This is now in a new A, B, leg C to the upside. This is filling in the gap. I love when they fill the gap and they keep moving higher. So this is Palantir software platform. Not a great looking chart at all on the monthly or the weekly, but the daily says filled in the re that first rectangle. So trading at 11.28. Um, right now, DEF slash C. I'm just going to give the alternate count. I just haven't got time to just check it out as much as thoroughly as I should. F slash C. And most importantly, is that the 9 is above the 14. The MACD is good. Stochastic stronger, 91%. On balance volumes improving. Relative strength is good. This is acting much better. And it says that if at any point next week it can close above, uh, 12.18, it's at 1128 right now, had a high today of 11.62. Then you're looking at tackling 13.26, it's going to take a while. But 13.26 is the 200 period moving average, mm, it's asking a lot from it. So in the meantime, major support is right there at 10.56. It must hold 10.56. Uh, it's in a buy mode right now. Uh, it needs to continue doing that. IBB, was that a question for me? So IBB is the uh, NASDAQ. There we go. And, and remember, folks, every single notation that you see here is hand drawn by me. And you can see it doesn't take much time at all. Um, so this is an A, even though the low bar is uh, hasn't made a trough because it had the starting point IBB was on the dreaded H formation that was successful at 104.29. Look how the MACD and stochastic, look how everything was turned positive. Look how the nine period moving average is still green. So what was the question? Uh, would you call your propeller shaft pattern? Oh, no. If it, if it even looks like a, a cup formation, I can't call it that. The propeller shaft formation would be um, yeah, I remember the IBB had that at some right. Yeah. No, it must be a cluster formation going sideways, or even a rectangle going sideways. No, all I can say is it's a cup formation right now. IBB trading down one at one twenty nine twelve. Uh, really important that look. Where did it stop? At, well, is it important to monitor the two hundred period moving average? Not when you're down at the May lows of um, 106, 105. Oh, but when you're at 129.07, twice hitting the 200 period moving average that you haven't even looked at since you were, I don't want to go back, but oh, since you were, you couldn't even make it above the air there. It touched it exactly before plummeting uh, around about December, November, December of last year. 
That was the last time it touched it, and it couldn't make it as C1, C2. That's a peak C1, 2. Yeah, so IBB is doing very nicely here, and I think it's in the category that says in the rotation that's going on right now, the certainly the little micro biotechs, and some of them are doing unbelievably well, but overall there are enough biotechs in the NASDAQ biotech ETF to say the weight of evidence is to say that there's still strength. How it deals with the 200 period moving average, it's making a peak C, a very small C, a very tiny dip today. If it gets to a leg D, I think it's going to be stuck here. And what I'll do is I'll draw this in and we'll check it out next week sometime. I'm drawing in a rectangle formation. There was a left side, right side price time match that didn't work. And now that has to be changed. I would now use this as the plumb line right here. And I'd go from left side to right side. And I'd say that would be my new way of looking at it. Going from there to there. And now I'm going to click and I'll say click. New paradigm. You could use just a single line. You don't need a rectangle. Uh, right there. I can't even go to the right because I need more bars. It says that sometime in late August, yeah, sometime in sometime in August, maybe early September, there should be a test of the 135.57 high that was made at peak D in the Chapman wave back in April uh, and before it plummeted to 104. So, yes, it's acting well. I drew in this rectangle formation. It's pretty much been in the – did I just do that? Well, that's what we're looking at. Next question was – HYG. Now, I think it's J and K that I've I, I've redone. Yeah, J and K. I had them all done, but I lost some of the data. Oh, I haven't done it. So J and K did the Chapman Wave uh, arch formation right there, the dreaded H, successful, and it held. So this is a, this is the Spider Barclays high-yield bond. It looks just like the other one, except I didn't have that notated. So that's an A. That's a Underneath it, it makes another A and a B. Fails underneath it, it makes an A because it hasn't taken out the left side low. So all of these are countable. B, then it goes to a C, goes to a D, and it's in an E right now saying, oh, I could have a little bit of a rest. So the junk bond down 77 at 95.96 um, stalled underneath the previous high. It seems to me this could be trapped in a range between 98.30 and 90, it's at 95, 96, and 94, 30. If it breaks under 94 at any point, it's going even lower. But right now, it's starting to rally to higher highs and higher lows. All the technicals are improving, and it says there's a chance that it can go to the 97s, but it needs to do that fairly quickly. So that's the uh, junk bond, the B, uh, J, N, K, which looks very much like the H, H, Y, G. Uh, here comes the, here comes the uh, break. Uh, oh, three gap play. I was asked about a three gap uh, play early, early in the week, and I just never got to it. And the only reason is I don't really know what to say. I'll talk about it when we get there. This coming Wednesday, August 10th, Basil Chapman will be hosting an all-day live webinar from 9 a.m. till 2 p.m. Eastern Time, where he'll be presenting the technical tools based on the Chapman Wave methodology, a full in-depth course on his entire trading system. Over the five hours of live education, Basil will discuss studying and practicing entry and exit points, assessing where to add or subtract from positions, utilizing simple technical tools for holding positions longer, taking bear charts and adding notations, tools, and patterns, as well as identifying three core formations that repeat in every time frame and much more. When you sign up, you get a chart booklet emailed to you immediately to start studying, and you gain access to his daily newsletter, The Opening Call, a $149 value. The cost to attend is only $295, and the full five hours will be archived. Don't miss this live special event Wednesday, August 10th with Basil Chapman. For all the details and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com right now. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Right, thank you very much, Dan and the Den, for pointing out that I had actually made a mistake that all he, that was not a peak D. It should have been a little later, and that makes sense because now we've got a G slash B. That's what I thought. It would, that's the way I was thinking, but it just didn't make sense. And or, for, uh, FTNT, which is uh, 14 net Inc., down $1.28 at 51.34, down 2%, made a peak D. What are we looking for in the chap wave? Peak Ds, and then you can get your greatest pullback. Yeah, you've done it, an arch formation. And look at this beautiful left side, right side price time match. If I was to have drawn this in, I didn't, of course, because I didn't even look at it. I, I was going to look at it. I saw it going by the ticker last night, but I never, I never did that. So here we go. Uh, this is uh, left side, right side, price time. Uh, this is the way we're going to be doing the analysis when I do my my course on Wednesday, and I'm I'm really thinking that I would I'm going to treat it as a trading one as well because I do it in any case, but I need to know that you're learning the techniques, and that's I have to think it through a little bit longer. But I'm almost sure that I'm going to have trades on, and I will make them an official trades. I am going to do that. Uh, but uh, I, I don't know if I can advertise it just yet. I'm just saying that I'm probably going to do it. So this is a Fortinet just broke out. Left side, right side, price time match. One bar two uh, sooner than it should have. Took out the 52 support. And here it is at 51.26. Let me finish up with those. So the three gap play. Um, a person who asked me, why don't you ask Tom O'Brien? Tom talks about that whenever he sees it occurring, he has a beautiful uh, thesis on it and, and something that he practices as well. I just... I've just found for my own technique, I I don't find that it does what it's supposed to do that I always hear enough for me to, to treat it as something that I, I always look at. Baba, he has another one question about Baba. I just be careful of these Chinese stocks. I don't I don't see a reason for going long Chinese stocks at this point. Um, there's just too much going on, too much conflagration, etc. Uh, next question was Adobe A D B E. How are we doing for time? Oh, we're doing okay. Adobe, leg F to the upside. Now, this one, monthly chart looks terrible. One of the great stocks of 2021 goes to 699.44. Uh, thumbs its nose at me. Doesn't go to round number 700. And then plumbs to 338. Round, oh, there's the round number. You remember I said, I knew there was one very important stock that made a round number low. That was 338, round number low back in June. For Adobe, it's trading right now at 426. That's a nice percentage gain. That's a 28-ish percent gain. And now look at this. The weekly chart is starting to improve. But improve is not good enough. It has to be stupendous. Because look at this. A, B, leg C. All it's doing is filling in this rectangle with a, with a cup formation right here. And that says that doji high that was made back in May-ish. Um, what is that? That was May the oh June the third, the week of the third of June at 441.90. Um, how it takes this out in the next four to six weeks is going to be how it takes it out 
turns the 380 area into support and then tackles the next objective, which would be the high of uh, April the 8th, the week of the 8th at 473s, that's going to be a big deal because that starts to form the pattern that I love, which is this lovely bowl, cuppish bowl formation, slowly working its way higher, just giving no room to the shorts, giving no room to the bulls even because unless you're in it, you keep missing it because every time it pulls back, it probably takes you out. So this is going to be really important in the weekly chart for Adobe. And this is a fantastic company. So that was a pretty serious move. 699 to 338, round number low. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, so you can see that 441.90. I've drawn the cup in. I've got the pattern right here. In fact, it was a stock I wanted to do for subscribers. I wanted to buy, but I didn't want to spend 300 and something dollars uh, when we can get the same percentage gains on lower price stocks, it, even in the same category. Um, so all I can say, what was it? The CEO was on with Kramer, I believe, uh, at 426 on the 9th of June. The 9th of June. Yeah, right here. Yeah, right here. The guy goes on with Kramer at four, just around the 440 area. And the thing drops 100 points to 338. So the, I always believe very strongly that a lot of the time the CEOs have no clue about the price of their stock. They know about the company. But when it comes to their stock, unless they really see a deal that says, oh, i I, I got to start buying here because our, our books are improving, the stock's way down, and on a fundamental level at this price, I think I'm getting a deal, or a technical level maybe, but most of the time, I, people I've spoken to are really, really important to own businesses. Uh, just so many times, um, they were saying what was different to what I was looking at in the technical chart pattern. So in this particular instance, uh, this is, I like the stock. I like the, just what the company's done over the years. But now it says it's got a lot of work. If you aren't in it now, now is a riskier time. I would much prefer to put, drop to the 410, 407 level. Let's see. We've got CCJ. CCJ, this is Cameco, right? Cameco. Cameco. Give me a break. Did I, I've written this. I don't know how many times I've notated this. Cameco uh, Core. Uh, give me a clue. They're in. Cameco. Cameco. It's not uranium, not well, what is Kamiko? Oh, I'd have to look it off. Look it up. Here we go. Uh, Kamiko, where did I even put that? There it is. Kamiko. Kamiko core does what? Uh, one of the large providers of uranium. Oh, okay, uranium. Uranium to generate a clean, reliable base. Electricity around the globe. Okay, so this is in play. You see the way it held Chapman Wave falling axe formation. This is the Chapman Wave inside track uh, propellant zone right there. It, it hit it exactly right there. It hit it. That's the falling axe formation, but the inverted one, which makes lower high, higher lows and much higher highs, and then it comes back to test in the arch formation. It's actually an inverted A. Uh, formation and then it does it successfully. This is in play at 2527. How you how you actually get in is really tough because uranium stocks. Look at this. I mean, even look at this. It goes from 18 to 32, back to 20, and then up to 28. I mean, it's really choppy. So all I can say is I refer to be looking at a call option going out to August, September, September or even October, and I'd get it in the money. You either risk everything by getting it out of the money at 27 or uh, 2650 if there's such a thing, or you go in the money, and I prefer to go in the money on the next pullback towards 24 to so 25, 26. I would get it in the money, uh, 2450, and it would be way out. And I think that that, that gives you time. That was the question was, uh, what about it? And that's all I can say. FCX is the same. If FCX is copper. FCX is a little different. This is an international ingredient, and I think copper is still under pressure. So I'm, I'm kind of holding off on the whole copper play. Yes, it made a peak C, but to tell you the truth, I, I, I don't particularly like the chart pattern. Uh, Nike, NKE. You can see I can do I can do a lightning round anytime you want, but because all of these charts I've notated by hand. 
rated double top peak C1, C2. Oh, was that the question? I think that was the question. Yeah, you're really getting good at this chap wave methodology. Uh, oh, was that the question? I saw a question, something that said, was that C1, C2? I'd have to go back and have a look. Oh, there it is. All right, I'm there. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So just let me do this for my webinar coming up on Wednesday. One of the things I look for, I look for the patterns. I look for the Chapman Wave methodology of trying to find, identify the lowest low bar, count each successively peak, higher peak. We want to get to the fourth highest peak, and then you have to do a, a different kind of analysis. Peak D is where other things can happen. I've never, I haven't seen this before. ENVX was a question asked in the den. Um, and what did it do? It went right to leg D. What was the objective? To get you to D, and it got you to D in the Chapman Wave methodology. What was the other thing that we always look for? Did it hit a 200 period moving average? Can it stall there? Yep, it stopped right at the 200 period moving average. Uh, what are the patterns that we are looking for? We're looking for uh, rectangle patterns that maybe make a cup and then a second cup and they can break out. Rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience. Remember, that's the rule of thumb. What are we looking for? How do you enter? Where do you take money off? Where would you where would you add to it the position because it's going so well? That's where you use time frames. Why did we take money off today in our some of our very uh, uh, in our more aggressive positions, three times long positions? Why? Because they went to peak D's. 
And you can see they're starting to pull back. Yeah, I expect a few days of consolidation. That's the way it is. So all of this is discussed. How do I get in? What do I do? Uh, what, how the left side, the time sequence, I love to teach that, the sequence of, of the, the mirror image on the left side to the right side, um, that's the number of bars to the number uh, up or the, should match the number of bars down very often in a cup formation or a V-shaped formation uh, and, and inverted in the arch, the same thing. Just these are the core things we go over and over and over and over. So it becomes second nature to you. And then I'll tell you, if you're able to do it in your software, almost everybody is. You just add these different moving averages or the MACD or stochastic. Uh, stochastic at 94% in ENVX in, in, in Nova Corporation. Um, 94 is great. That's what you want to see. And holding. On balance volume is just about to get a little overboard. MACD is good. 9 over the 14 is good. Hey, these are all things that we'll be learning. So... Go to the front page of TFNN, check it out. Stay tuned. Great program coming up for the rest of the day. And check out my opening call daily newsletter. See you Monday. Have a great weekend. <music>